Welcome to Mondo and Friends, presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco, and today I am, man, this woman does so much. Uh, puppeteer, mm -hmm. an actress. She is the woman behind HBO's A Black Lady Sketch Show, a political comedy show called Let's Be Real, the hit series Netflix's Waffles and Mochi, which she's worked on with Michelle Obama. She's also the CEO and creative director of Viva La Puppet. Yeah. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Michelle Zamora. <laughs> How are you? I'm so good, Mondo. Thanks for having me. How was that intro? Did I did I do it justice? Yeah, you did. I was like, what? You're like, you missed this, you missed this. Yeah, missed no, it was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? I did all that shit? <laughs> um, actually, Robin Thede is the woman behind a Black Lady Sketch Show. Yes, yes. And you, yeah. you're obviously you're a, you're a I, We made some puppets it. for the season one, like the intro. So that was really exciting. So you hear, you know, these things that, that you do. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget about all the, the things that, that we yeah. do on a daily basis yeah. or even in like a, a, a year's mm -hmm. span, you're like, oh, yeah, I did do mm -hmm. that. that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Of, of these, I, I know, I mean, we're going to get into it. You've done a, a whole lot more. Um, of these things that I just mentioned, um, what would you say is, is uh, most, more, the most special uh, in, in your in your heart? I think I know the answer, but. <laughs> it's hard. Because <laughs> they're all different. They're all so different. They're all so different. I mean, with Viva La Puppet, we, I'm pretty much, we design, build, and puppeteer. So we work a lot in like commercials, TV, film. Um, for me, the joy of what I do is more in just seeing the puppets like actually click yeah. and come to life and like be a thing in our world um because you know people will have an idea hey i want this to look like this and i want this character to be able to do that and then just taking uh what a director gives us and like bringing it to life on screen that's that's most exciting for me but um it's hard to pick yeah there yeah. you 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 can't pick um like a favorite a favorite kid right uh -uh. <laughs> they're uh -uh. all they're all no, special i got two and they're both great <laughs> And uh, yeah, you're a mom. I'm a mom. You know, on top of all of that. Yeah. When did that? How did that? What? You have a, a, a 10 month old? <laughs> yeah. I got a 10 a month old son named Milo and my daughter. She's about to be four. Like Man. next week. Yeah. Uh, is it, is, does it get a little tricky to balance family life? The look said it, said it all before uh, I even finished my question. <laughs> um, to balance family life and, and, and like your work life. Yeah, like coming here and having to, you know, tell my daughter, hey, I'm going to go do this thing. I'll be right back. You know, um, it's it's definitely a delicate balance of being able to be there for them when they need me. They need their mom, you know, yeah. and be able to share in this journey, uh, this puppet crazy adventure with them and them being able to be in a space that there's just all these magical creatures around them <laughs> and puppets and it's just their world, you know? <laughs> and my son yesterday was just like, Papa, Papa. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's begun. It's begun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely um, something that I, I have so much more respect for my mom after having kids yeah, yeah it's just a whole nother sensibility when you become a mom to really understand like what what my mom did for me and what my dad did for me as parents and uh all the times that something would happen i'd scrape my knee or like you know i need need to go to walmart at midnight yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for a project i forgot my poster board <laughs> yeah yeah and and they just did it you know it, it people say like the days are long but the years are short and that's really yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine um, how cool it is at, at your, at your place, having the puppets and then, you know, having your kids mm -hmm. look at the puppets, play, play with the puppets. Oh yeah. My daughter just picked one up yesterday. <laughs> Ellie, she picked one up and she was just like beep, beep, boop, 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 oh, doing a little so voice cool. to it. Yeah. And, and do you, do you do like, little shows for them no no <laughs> you're like when i get home i'm tired like no it's time like, for puppets you know when you do something all day you don't want to come home and do it no you know i do sometimes yeah i do i i do uh i do bring things to life but usually it's inanimate objects around the house because it's more fun for me <laughs> nice so explain to me what 
puppeteering yeah like what does that consist of because it's not just it doesn't mean like you know have something that you put your hand in or anything like it could be you say inanimate objects like a puppet is anything that you bring to life like a puppeteer endows an object with life force so i can pick up this microphone and like bring it to life and have it in a scene and it's a puppet so i mean anything can potentially be a puppet so when you open up your um your eyes to see that anything in this space can be a puppet and has the potential to be a puppet Man. then you can start really being creative um and that's what i love i love stretching the boundaries of what puppets can do what they can be um what they can look like yeah. and um with viva la puppet i always try to and every project infuse a new fresh take on puppetry mm-hmm. and also like finding our voice within that which comes with a lot of innovation too like coming up with cool new ways to make a mouth a, a puppet mouth move and yeah a puppet eye blink and all kinds of stuff so yeah i was watching uh waffles and mochi and there's um there's a scene when uh there's a there's a broom walking mm-hmm. in and a mop walking yeah. in yeah and i don't know like those are those aren't the traditional would say puppets. No, no. And and that's pretty cool how you like bring them to yeah to life. And how, how does that like happen? Are you just like yeah? Hmm. Like yeah, what well, can I be make into a puppet? Yeah. Well, anytime somebody comes to us with like a, a request like that, like a can you make a a broom come to life or can you make a, a water cooler come to life? Uh, it's always like hmm and and looking at the object so many different ways and figuring out where the face would go. So, so much in our lives, we go around, you know, life and we say, oh my gosh, that, that thing looks like a face or, you know, you take a picture and later you post it and you're like, look, this, this, uh, plug outlet, (laughs) it's smiling, you know? So (laughs) I kind of take that, um, that sensibility in, and looking at any object and realizing that it can have a face, it can possibly move like this. And, and how would it like, if it talked, like, how would it sound? How, yeah, exactly. That's- and then also like, what, what, how would this thing move and, and, and talk and, and navigate through this world with us? <laughs> I watched a commercial that you did. Mm-hmm. I mean, you do a bunch of commercials and yeah. a lot of cool things. Um, it was, um, was it? vitamin water yeah yeah vitamin the water, water cooler yeah. was that that was a water mm-hmm, cooler. vitamin water yeah and um <laughs> like how did that happen how, how did that how how i mean the, the, you know the agency the directors come to us and they're like hey vitamin water commercial uh water cooler what can you do and um the you know they give us some ideas and and we go you know, work with them to select the just right water cooler. And from there, I look at it, I'm like, okay, how do we do this? And um, how do we do it practically and in camera? Because a lot of the times with puppets, that's that's the challenge is like, for me, I love being able to rig something, make something move and, and do it in camera. So practically, as opposed to like, eh, let's just put some markers and they'll do it in post. Yeah. Because I just feel like puppets have that that quality that is so real and tangible and and when they touch something it moves in our world and it and when you see puppets that's what's so cool about them because you think like oh they could i could totally walk down the street and see this thing maybe one yeah day. <laughs> yeah when i watched that commercial i thought i i this, this is before i knew you yeah you you created it yeah um i thought that had to be because i also look at at things and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the television over here mm-hmm. um oh, yeah. I, I also look, and I'm also looking at our, our the beautiful face of our, our <laughs> direct, director of photography with a mask on. Yeah. Um, no, but like when I'm watching something on, on television, mm-hmm. I also look at it with a different eye than like the average person. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that's, that's how they, that's how they lit it. That's how they, yeah. um, you know, uh-huh. they, they cut here or they did this transition here mm-hmm. or I thought that was CGI mm-hmm. when I when I first saw it, and then it's enhanced a bit. It's enhanced a little bit, but the mouth itself is in camera. So I'm behind a wall with my husband and partner in Viva La Puppet, <laughs> which we'll probably talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what, both, what his name? Matias. Matias. Yeah, Matt. Mm-hmm. Yes. Michelle and Matt. So you and and, and Matt. Uh-huh. are behind a wall yeah so we're behind a wall squished together and i'm doing the mouth and he's uh doing the the little eye eyebrow roll that's happening 
and also there's i think it cries <laughs> so the spouts <laughs> like cry and so all this stuff is done practically um but he's doing the eyebrows at the same time i'm making the mouth move and to get that that look that they wanted for this kind of music video-esque feel yeah they sped it up like i don't know four or five times it was ridiculously fast wow and it was like and and literally i was puppeteering and when they slowed it down it was in sync and i said oh my gosh did i just get a world record for like puppeteering the fastest puppet ever <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody recorded it but I, i'm pretty sure <laughs> wow you're you're like a you're like Twista, the rapper. That's right. But in, in public. World's fastest Popo too. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know what? That, I think that's super cool. Um, your journey starts in, I know you're, you're originally from Brownsville, Texas. Yes. Brownsville. Uh, like our, our DP right. over here. This is, this is we just found out they, <laughs> that, that Michelle and, and Fred uh, grew up in yeah. the same uh, town and went Texas. to the same high school. Yep. Same high school. Lopez High. Lopez Lobos? Lopez Lobos. Hey. Always, 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 always <laughs> lead the pack. He's, <laughs> he's the wolf pack. <laughs> yes, yes. The double L. Yeah. Lopez That's Lobos. That's a trip. Such a trip. Uh, small world. Small world. I haven't went to the same college, Cal State LA. Cal State LA. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and we both have a Z for our last Z name. Last name. Wow. Were you guys in homeroom together? <laughs> I don't know. She was a senior. Yep. Got it. Got it. I was a senior. Got it. <laughs> a, few, a few years apart. But you guys were in high school at the same time at some point. Yeah. We, cr we passed each other in the halls and now we're back. Look at this. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. So, so you grew up in Brownsville, yeah. Texas. Yes. Um, you know, then you later for college moved to, to Los LA. Angeles. Mm -hmm. Puppeteering for you. I, well, I know initially you, you were into acting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh so no. It went from acting to to puppet, puppetry. Mm -hmm. Um when did the the acting bug yeah get you? Uh Yeah, it's really clear in my mind at, at that moment. Um so I it was I think my first day of middle school and my parents are both school teachers from Brownsville, Texas. Um my dad at the time I think was the vice principal of uh my middle school and through his blinds you could see the cafeteria and the stage. And so I would have to wait after school for him to finish. Um, and I'd just be sitting in his office. And then I'd look through the, the blinds and just be snooping <laughs> and watching them practice the, 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 the theater department and practice that they were just practicing on the stage and they were acting. And I was, I would just stand, be there for hours, just watching, just watching. And then one day the, <laughs> the the teacher came to my my dad and was like, uh, does she want to come into the cafeteria? She can. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would just watch them practice every after after school every day, and um, and then eventually I started going on stage and performing, and uh, it was wow. it was that moment of seeing something and 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 being so drawn to it. And then taking the step to actually go a couple steps into the space where it's happening. <laughs> yeah. And then be on the stage and, 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 and perform. I was super like introverted too. It's really like um, quiet at, at that time. You know, middle school is yeah, awkward. Of <laughs> so, in, so in middle school mm -hmm. and in high school, do you continue with acting or is that when like yeah. puppetry kind of yeah. takes over? I did a lot yeah. <laughs> in high school. Yeah. I was... Um, I played the French horn for seven years. The French horn. <laughs> yeah. Is is that the the curly the curly one? curly one? Yeah, you can blast all like Jurassic Park and <laughs> Harry Potter and Star Trek. All the best soundtracks are French horn. Um, French horn. <laughs> uh, and I was drum major. I I acted and performed. I just I just did it too much. I over prepared myself for, for college. <laughs> that's what I say. A true <laughs> um, creative. Yeah, I was just always like. <sighs> I was always I was always hustling and I think I learned that from my mom big time. Like my mom, she was a kindergarten school teacher her whole life and um every every holiday she would go to the stage. With, apparently I'm drawn to like cafeterias and stages. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad place to but to be at the I, cafeteria. I would stay late and we'd be the last ones to leave the school me and my mom and my mom would decorate the stages. And all she had was butcher paper from like the, the teacher's lounge, scissors and tape. And then the next morning, the kids would come and the whole stage would just be like decked out, like production 
you know, design and like, it was all paper. She would create like these whole worlds on these stages. Wow. And I, I would stay with her till late, late at night to just get it done. And I think that's, I learned a lot about, um, you know, completing and finishing a project from her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being that your both your parents mm -hmm. were in education, um, is that something that they wanted you to get into or were they kind of, um, <laughs> hey w whatever michelle wants to, yeah. to do is, is cool yeah they never put anything on us um i you know they're so special because me and, and just have a sister me and my sister amanda she's uh, older than me um and i'm the baby and <laughs> so we grew up just playing constantly playing always playing on our yard always riding our bikes always coming home and just playing with our dolls and then one day my dad got a vhs camcorder <laughs> and it changed our world Wow. I uh, immediately started directing her, <laughs> telling her what to wear, how to put her makeup on, <laughs> where to stand, what to do, what to say. Wow. Um, and being the amazing big sister, you know, we, we we made so many like home videos and so many things that we created actually had puppets infused in them. And I didn't realize it until wow. later in life, looking back at old home videos, seeing like me <laughs> and a Cabbage Patch doll that I like bent its head backwards and put it on my <laughs> head. And then I was like a little humanette. Do you remember? Wow. Like yeah. we, there was like a show called Wienerville on Nickelodeon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was yeah. all humanettes. And so I, I, when I saw that, I said, ah, uh, it all makes sense. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, technically then like puppetry is something that you were into from, yeah. from the get-go. Oh, yeah. It was, it, it was like, it was within mm -hmm. your your mm -hmm. your soul yeah i mean and also in the 80s and 90s we were inundated with puppets you don't realize it but i i went down the wormhole of like researching puppets and commercials and programming back in the day and there's so much there was so much um amazing programming like la lamb chops you know oh man lamb sesame chops. street oh, lamb i got a story chops. about lamb chops ask me about lamb chops later <laughs> um there was just so much amazing you know puppet programming that it, it it clearly affected me and it clearly like inspired me jim henson you know yeah for sure of course mm -hmm. this is a song that doesn't, doesn't end yes yeah, it, it goes, goes on, on and on, 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 on my friend <laughs> some people started, started singing, singing it not knowing what it was <laughs> and they'll continue singing it forever just, just because, because <laughs> <all God>. <laughs> oh man okay so i, I want to know about lamb yeah. chops now okay so i think one of my first uh earlier uh, mentors here in la after after college uh i got hooked up with uh an artist named pat brimer and he had a shop in highland park at the time so that's kind of like the more romantic part of my training was uh i took the gold line to his shop and rode my bike to his shop and um he taught me so much about foam fabrication and and building you know muppet style hand and rod puppets wow. and um and being in his shop for the first time he showed me around and he said this will be your table and i sat down how old were you at this point ah uh, I think it was like two years after, no, one one year after graduating, so. High school? No, college. College? Yeah. Oh, so you graduated mm -hmm. high at college? Yeah. And, and. And then so, I got hooked up with. And then you, and mentor. then it happened. Yeah, well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I came out to college and that summer of college, um, I just woke up one day and was like, I want to make a puppet. And I was in the theater department at Cal State LA. I was in experimental, doing a lot of experimental theater and acting and performance. And in the summertime, the theater just went dark. Mm -hmm. So I, I went into the scenic shop and there was one guy working there. His name was Tony Martinez. And this guy was, would, would forever change the trajectory of my life because wow. he yes anded me. I went in because I had a dream that night was like, I got to make a puppet. I got to make a puppet. And I went into there and I said, hey, I want to make a puppet. And he was like, okay. <laughs> Just with those words, okay. It like changed my life. Because then he went and got gr grabbed some foam from upstairs. He threw it down. He said, okay, go to it. Do it. And uh, that was it. That was when it, it began. Just somebody just saying, sure, do it. <laughs> that is, is, is insane. The fact that you, you had a dream. Yeah. 
uh, if, if uh, the dream telling you to make a puppet and then you just make a puppet and that just change yeah your your life well in that in, and that's the thing throughout life there's these little i don't know these little like voices that are our, our inner voice yeah whispering to us things and it's like either we listen to it or we, we just don't right and so in that moment it i just kind of didn't have a choice like i felt that voice and i was like wow that i have to walk over here do this thing i don't know why and then later looking back on those home videos and realizing wow i had always always been making puppets and i'd always been puppeteering it's just growing up in south texas in brownsville <laughs> it's it's not a profession like i didn't have a model for what this looks like right um you know i i had a lot of uh, amazing people in my world but nothing in the in the realm of entertainment industry or, or performance um or puppets like i remember the first year i came home from college and i was telling all my family and, and friends and people that i i'm a puppeteer i like to make puppets and they're like oh you like to play with dolls <laughs> like some people you know yeah they just yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. You, you oh you make puppets for church or you know yeah. um and that's amazing like there's so many forms of puppetry you know there's definitely people recognize puppets in church or like uh mcgruff you remember that puppet in school <laughs> um and 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 then library puppets too that's yeah that's kind of like our first um introduction into puppetry so the fact when i came out here and my my eyes were just open to a whole world of of fabricators and, and people that worked in all forms of puppetry. It just really changed my life. So you graduate college mm -hmm. and you meet yeah. this gentleman. This, this yeah, this, um, basically he was just like a puppet uh, icon. Um, so his How name, does that happen? I, I think I, through, by way of, of the theater world, like I had been hustling and making puppets for whatever anybody wanted to pay me to make a puppet. Cause I was like, I'm just happy to be here yeah. <laughs> and be doing what I love. Um, and then I think um, I, my first, very first mentor was Lynn Jeffries and she does like shadow puppetry. And she's an amazing, amazing artist, woman, just inspiration. Um, and I learned how to make a lot of shadow puppets through her. And I think maybe she, recommended him and i went and just cold called him and said hey i'm i'm ready to learn let's do this wow so uh i'm in his shop and he's saying here's your here's your here's your desk right here okay i'm gonna throw a bunch of stuff at you you're gonna make it you're gonna glue it together how about 12 arms i'm like okay i'll make 12 arms <laughs> about 12 hands and so he just like i was uh i was just learning from him um and then i remember that day i look back and there's like a shelf and I look up and I'm looking around and in a little Tupperware, I see it labeled lamb chops. And I said, oh my gosh, so it's my childhood right behind me in a, in a Tupperware box. <laughs> and uh, I freaked out. I freaked out a little bit because there's so, there's so many amazing artists and people around us yeah. that we have no idea that they had such a huge inspiration. They, they, they shaped, he shaped me as as a the puppet artist that I am today because Lamb Chops was my childhood, you know? Seeing her image and he created it. This is amazing. Wow. Would yeah. he also um like was he was he how don't what, what, what would you call it? Like when you Puppeteer? Puppeteer, yeah. Was yeah, he puppeteer it? Lamb I'm Chops not, too? I'm not sure exactly. I think a lot of people end up puppeteering a, a character throughout its life, but um I am pretty sure he he had a hand in puppeteering. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you know With what? Sherry Lewis. Since once once you mentioned lamb chops, which for those that don't know, uh lamb chops is a mm -hmm. is a classic icon. Iconic <laughs> um, you know, puppet show. Mm -hmm. Um lamb chops being like the the lead yes. uh character. Yeah. Um when you mention lamb chops and now you know you working on on this project with Michelle Obama mm -hmm. um waffles and mochi waffles gives me that like uh, type of energy uh, that's great. which is a beautiful thing yeah like have you ever like thought of, about that I think I think everything that inspired me uh, as a, a child kind of comes through when I do comes back puppets. around yeah, yeah there's like little nostalgic nods to the things that I grew up with and the puppets that I gravitated to and loved so much and were 
you know, so beloved in my life that I think it just, it kind of just all comes together in, it's, it's definitely informs what I end up doing when I perform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're a, a strong advocate of giving opportunities uh, to Latinx yeah. and LGBTQ mm -hmm. community in entertainment and in puppetry. Yes. Why would you say that's so important for you? I, I feel like when I first had my first couple of projects where I was able to, you know, build and puppeteer and actually be on set and be a creative on set and be looked at as a creative um you know i was always behind, underneath a puppet just doing my thing yeah <laughs> and um not really looking at myself either thinking that oh because of the way i look like i can't do a thing <laughs> yeah. i'm just i'm just following that voice you know and w what's interesting to me about that is is the fact that you um you may be you know the maybe the only latina at, at times on on these sets um and in puppetry no one really knows what you look like so the fact mm -hmm. that there isn't more diversity yeah. is, is is something that that yeah. should, that should change for sure for sure i um when i started realizing that i started taking more responsibility for it but also being um kind of uh coming to set with a lot more pride yeah. as well to to be able to grow this company and grow it in a way that we can give opportunities to people that, you know, uh, maybe like me, never thought I could have a living, you know, doing my art and, and puppeteering and bringing things to life. It's so freaking fun. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> that, like, the, f the fact that I get to do this, but I also get to create opportunities and, and, and moments where other people that I enjoy working with can be side by side with me, you know, and yeah. most definitely elevating and, and lifting up, um, you know, the Latinx community and, and all just all diverse women, yeah. especially like I love our team of women, fabricators and puppeteers. So great. Uh, so tell me about Viva La Puppet. Yeah. You first kicked off Viva La Puppet mm -hmm. seven years ago, you yep. were telling me. Yeah, seven years. Um, so when you launched, what was the initial goal? Yeah, you know, I, I've been doing the puppet hustle for 20 years out here. And wow. when we decided, you know, let's, let's go for it. That's the big like leap of faith that happens where, you know, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm going for this because it's kind of taking over. And, uh, and um, it all began with my husband and I just doing our thing, yeah. you know? Um, I met my husband when I was 16. <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, we met at a summer camp at the University of Chicago and um and ever since we've just kind of been, you know, growing together, evolving together, supporting each other and as I graduated college, you know, I just wanted to make puppets and he was like, "Go, oh, go babe, do it, you know. Let's do this." And uh and he would do any odd job possible to like, you know, sustain us <laughs> because yeah. at this time you know like i was just trying to make a name for us and yeah. just make a puppet for anybody that wanted it and wow. uh one of the first places i made a puppet for with casa 0101 josefina lopez's company in boyle heights wow and um they gave me so many opportunities to like express myself and exercise that muscle within myself and i'm so grateful for that opportunity and that again that moment where people can see you and your passion and just say, okay, do it, go for it, um, was huge. Um, so yeah, and so then my husband supporting us, I'm just trying to trying to do something and I get my first, like we get our first um, pilot for a kid's show. And this was years and years and years ago. And I was so excited and it was super low budget like super low budget <laughs> but i was at the time i was like oh my gosh somebody wants to pay me money and to make puppets and in the beginning it was always me talking like that like me 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 and then having to like open up and and think of we this yeah. is a when it became a we then it was like it was bigger than me um so i remember this one pilot and it was like three little characters and one big character and I was like, oh, I got this. We got this. <laughs> and um, we're making the puppets. And basically, like, my husband's, like, working his job. 
comes home super duper late the night before the shoot and i'm on the floor just like freaking out trying to stitch these puppets in time for the shoot tomorrow wow and i you know in the beginning it's really hard to gauge how long a puppet takes in the beginning because every puppet is so different there's yeah. no roadmap to how to make this particular puppet and how long it's going to take you. So I was like freaking out and I was stitching everything so fast. And then he comes home after like at 1 a.m. It's like, what's 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 up? And it's like, I get it. I'm having like a hyperventilating because oh. this is our big, big break. You know, this is the yeah. big job into like TV. And and uh, he's like, OK, babe, let's do this. Uh, let's, let's do it. He got got the needle and thread was sewing right next to me. We we're sewing like the wind. And wow. uh, ultimately, Viva La Puppet is a thing now because my husband like just picked up a needle and thread late at night after working a whole job and stayed up with me all night long to make this happen. And so we've grown together and this we've grown this company together. And he he loves working with his hands his whole life. He's done so many jobs. Um, he always said, I want to be my own business owner one day. Wow. That was his thing. I want to be my own business owner. And then I told him, well, you better be careful what you wish for, but you got to wish specific. Like you got to, you got to dream specific. So he never said he didn't want to be like a puppet business owner. <laughs> 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 be specific. Cause one day you never know what, how it's going to come to you. But you know, um, really the, the, the idea for us, you know, becoming an actual business and doing all the work that comes with doing yeah. that you know <laughs> yep. um was a moment that we just took the plunge we kind of had to as well because we had an opportunity to work on a on a kids tv show and make a lot of puppets for that at the time uh seven years ago and it was kind of like a natural progression we've always grown organically um our company and that was the moment to do it and viva la puppet is actually uh, a name that came from a friend of mine. So I was, you know, doing the whole theater scene in LA, doing a lot of plays at Casa Zero One Zero One and Center Theater Group. And um, my friend Javi Moreno, he was my friend at the time. And I was trying to think of like, oh, MEZ Design. Nah, that's that's weird. <laughs> um, I was thinking of names, and then he just doodled something, and he he turned it around and showed it to me, and it was like Viva, and then LA, you know, puppet. Super cool. And I said, that's it. I love it. That's it. So thank you, Javi. <laughs> yeah, no, that's such a cool name. Viva La Puppet. Viva La Puppet. What I, I love about your story is how there has been these these moments where you like something tells you something within you tells you yeah. um, or you tell someone what you want to do mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, sure, mm-hmm. do it. Mm hmm. And you and the fact that you do it, mm-hmm. um, that that initiative is is so important yeah. because sometimes people feel like they should do something, yeah. but instead of pushing through, mm-hmm. it's there's doubt, um, there's there's um, like imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. and there's there's a bunch of other things yeah. that that comes through people's minds, yeah. Um, the fact that you push through and you have, you know, executed and you're yeah. like, I want to do this. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do. It. And, you know, I, I have to say that that has been something for me, Michelle, mm-hmm. that I think uh, has been one of my strongest, um, you know, uh, I guess like s- strongest things in, 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 what do you say? Like in my personality mm-hmm. or in my being and the person that I am um, is, is that I say I'm going to do something and then I do it like that follow through yeah. is, is so important. Yeah, for sure. A lot, a lot of times there's also a lot of times when people say, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. And there's yeah. no follow through. Yeah. So I, you know, a lot, I think a lot of, not, I think I know a lot of your success comes from, mm-hmm um the, the initiative nights. and then the execution yeah yeah for sure and it's has is that easy for you does that come natural to you for yeah. you yeah yeah. Oh, yeah yeah that's like that's i have no other choice but to complete and finish like for yeah. me 
Um, and I think I, I definitely, that was instilled by my parents. Like my parents were definitely great with follow through and like, you know, my dad's saying a thing and doing it, whether my family needed a thing or whatnot, I would always see the consistency, I guess. And, um, now me with my own kids, that's something that I want to instill in them, you know, like any, anything that I, I want to pass on to my kids, I have to do it myself. Like I have to do it. That's the only way. So, um, my personality is very similar to like waffles, the puppet, because she leaps before she thinks and I leap before I think for everything. So it's like, how do you, the, that it's, you're saying like that, that drive, that, that initiative, the fin I don't have any other choice. It's my personality type yeah. to, you know, everybody comes to the ledge of a, of a place to jump off a cliff and I'm already like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I think sometimes I pull the trigger. I'm easy, easy to just go and hack at a thing, you know, like that's, that's me. Like I'll just go and you'll see me in the corner, just running like a Tasmanian devil. And then it's like done. Um, but there's also the other side of it. Like my husband, he, we're definitely yin and yang in that sense because he helps me to remember, like you gotta sharpen the ax. And yep. sharpening the axe for me sometimes just means like stopping, go take a bath, go take a shower, go light a candle, meditate, go eat fruit, just take care of yourself, you know? And maybe today we don't hack away at the puppet. Let's maybe today we go take a me day and that is sharpening the axe. I don't know if you know, um, there's a story about this, these two people, and one of them, um, they're like, okay, you need to cut down this tree. And there's two trees. One of them goes straight to the tree and is just like, ha, sa, 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 like hacking, yep. hacking, just going at it and just like, <laughs> and the, the other person goes to the tree and actually sits on a stump next to the tree and just gets the ax and sharpens it. Sharpens, 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 while the other person's sweating and going crazy. <laughs> and then, and then when it's time to actually cut down the tree, it's just like, whack, whack, whack. And it's done. Wow. So there's definitely a balance to it. And I try to stop myself sometimes to be like, you know what? Uh, why are you going to, why are you going to stay up all night and work on this thing when you're gassed out, you're exhausted, you have no more energy, like go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> and so I yeah. feel like you're talking to me. Right. right? Now. Yeah. Mondo, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> go home, okay. light a candle, <laughs> freaking eat some snacks, yeah. watch watch a show yeah <laughs> take yeah. care of yourself <laughs> yeah yeah no i i think that's oh by the way i've never heard of the 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 axe the yeah. sharpening your axe yeah, story which i love this, and yeah. i'm i'm gonna that's i'm gonna that. borrow that mm. from time to yes. time if that's okay with so you so good yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh when it comes to um you know taking a, a, a me day you know taking a personal day yeah. um among what other, I guess, what other things do you do to take care of, of your mental health? Uh, well, being a puppeteer, people might not realize, but like it takes a toll on your body. Um, holding your arm up for, you know, a whole day for in scenes, you know, minutes, lots of minutes at a time. Um, it really does take a toll on your body and, and maintaining the body and really listening to the body is so important. So you know, massage, massages are like a puppeteer's best friend and so necessary and important um, because we're holding up a puppet like for a long, a ridiculous amount of time sometimes. Yeah. Um, and you build, we build up these muscles over time because, you know, when we're, when we're on set, sometimes people see us like, oh my God, how you do that? And it's really, it's years and years of building up these muscles, you know? Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I, <laughs> I puppeteered something and I was looking in the, in the monitor, I was like doing my thing. And then I just saw that, saw the puppet like kind of leaning and I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> like, uh. oh, wow. um, and it's just kind of, uh, something that happens with any profession, right? You build up these muscles, whatever it is, creative muscles, you know, actual muscles. Um, but massage chiropractic appointments um what other things do i like to do just having a day with my family you yeah. know going to a park and running around um for me it's like the it's the really the little things and the moments when sometimes i just get to be on the couch with my with my babies and my husband and just cuddle that's that's everything that's a beautiful thing yeah 
for someone that wants to get into mm -hmm. your your field of work yeah who is you know fresh out of high school or fresh yeah. out of college uh what advice would would you give them i would just say okay do it <laughs> um i actually would say um follow your joy if whatever that is you know if 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 bringing things to life intrigues you and you want to pursue it and there's a little thing inside you that's like maybe i would say do it like go for it because you'll never know unless you try and yeah. you'll never know if you could have created a life in in bringing things to life you know just because somebody else is doing it or or you don't see that many people that look like you doing it doesn't mean that you can't do it you can totally do it and you you carve your own path there's there was no roadmap for me like there was just a voice inside me that said do a thing and me just continuing to figure out what this is and what and which way to go and and more and more now that um our company has been established and we've we've done so many so many amazing projects i've learned to be a little more like water just allow things to come into my life and happen and we take it as we go and try not to force much just grow organically keep hustling and doing what we do and infusing all our work with joy yeah congrats on on everything that you've accomplished Thanks up until now i know you still have a, a long way to go you just yeah. did this um so so facebook just changed their name to the company name to meta yeah right there's a, a commercial for for that that mm -hmm. big launch that mm -hmm. that went out yeah. that has puppets yeah and yeah. you guys were, were a big part of that How, yeah. how'd that come about yeah it was uh the first campaign ad for meta and um so they came to us and was like we want to bring this painting to life. We want to bring the artwork of Henri Rousseau to life. So I was like, well, I love these paintings. I love these animals. That's pretty exciting. And then it's, it becomes a thing of like, well, how can we come up with creative ways to make this happen with the amount of time we get and the budget and everything? So the style is informed by all of that, you know, um, being able to make these these puppets look like they're coming out of a painting. It's like we really had to, have a team of like 12 fabricators fabricating yeah. in one place and 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 remotely as well um just sculpting and 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 painting and doing all the joints there's was, there's a lot of steps to making those puppets and wow. when they all came together and clicked and then all the puppeteers were bringing them to life on set it was super special and really a huge feat that we all accomplished and i'm super proud of our team are you so you you create you design mm -hmm. the puppets as a creative director right mm -hmm. right and uh are you also puppeteering a lot of your projects oh absolutely yes. yeah most of the time I'll, I'll come on as the puppet captain or the puppet jefa yeah, i like that <laughs> i just coined that now like, nah, the puppet, puppet, jefa. puppet master now nah, puppet captain <laughs> puppet jefa can you put that on call sheet please yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah thanks yeah. <laughs> um but really i'll i'll come on and really as the puppet ever <laughs> it's it's like i manage the team of puppeteers mm -hmm. i help facilitate all parts of the team there's there's the puppeteers but there's also the puppet wranglers and nobody knows what a puppet wrangler is until i tell them and i said oh there's they're they're everything on set when all the puppeteers are underneath something like all squished and we need a certain material or thing or the eye popped off like help me Wow. that's the puppet wrangler they make sure that the puppets look their best on set and um as the go between the you know where all the materials are and the person and they're so important so it, it takes a whole team to bring these puppets to life in camera yeah and you're also i mean you're you're also the talent too yeah. like oh absolutely yeah we're we are puppeteers are talent we are performers yes we are, belong to the union sag like it, a lot of people when they say that they're like what yeah the the difference is like it's like acting and infusing all my instincts as an actor through an object right so it's a different sensibility but it's still performance it's it's just usually with a hand <laughs> and uh and we're we're down below um but 
yeah, it's it's definitely like we 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 are talent and performers for sure. Do do you do projects where because when I think puppets, I think like happy, right? Mm-hmm. Happy, joyful puppets. Yeah. Do you ever do these projects or scenes when a puppet is is sad or, mm-hmm. or going through a tough time? Yeah, I'm sure. If you look on our website, I'm sure there's all kinds of crazy stuff. We we did a lot of Adult Swim promos early in the in, on and um, like kind of recreating movies like The Dark Knight <laughs> yeah, yeah. and things like that uh, at the time in, in puppet form. So uh, making underworld you know the the werewolf and and um yeah there i think we've worked on a lot of different types of puppets and projects rick and morty butthole ice cream yeah <laughs> if you look at that yeah it's pretty quirky and, and different um but for for the most part with viva la puppet i love the fact that we can you know join a project and and think about all the different styles of puppetry that are out there there's so many different styles of puppetry yeah. like okay you, most people know the hand and rod style right like right. the muppet style um there's also just rod puppets which are just manipulated with rods so they're sometimes smaller there's um bunraku like tabletop puppets which is a japanese art form it's beautiful there's like um uh, underwater puppetry like underwater puppetry i know look it up Look that's, it up. You'll be like, what? That's cool. <laughs> I definitely, I'm definitely. Shadow puppets, Indonesian shadow puppetry. I mean, puppetry around the world is so rich and wonderful and beautiful. And and puppets are like the very first form of star- storytelling, really, as uh, from the beginning of time when somebody decided, oh, yeah, I'm going to knock these stones together and make a fire. Oh, when fire was created, shadow puppets were created. People yeah. would tell stories with their hands. And in doing that, that's a puppet. It's a hand puppet. You know, it's a shadow puppet. So, yeah, puppets are, I think, I think they're just always kind of innately in us to to bring to life, especially when we're kids. Like, yeah. we're constantly playing with our dolls and, like, giving them voices and, like, having them walk together oh, and sure. go down, the, you know, to the, I don't know, the pool. Or a sock, right? Yeah, like or a sock puppet. Sock puppet paper bag puppets yeah i mean we've all we've all have our introduction into puppetry early on but it's it's the idea that something that gives you joy as a kid could potentially also give you joy as an adult totally possible yeah i love before i even say that what's your favorite type of 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 puppetry or puppets do you have a favorite i really enjoy rod puppetry the reason I enjoy rod puppetry is because like the the size of them um, is a little smaller and there's a lot more ranges of motion that you can get uh, that is just a little different. And and I don't know, I just really like mechanisms. I like making eyes blink and mouths move and eyebrows twitch. And <laughs> I love geeking what, what's, on that stuff. What's a, uh, so for those that, that aren't familiar with rod puppetry, what's like a... An example of of that. What's a character mm, example? Let's see. Uh, Pepe the Shrimp. Pepe the King Prawn. Sorry. Do you know uh, from the Muppets? There's yes. Rizzo the Rat. Yes. Yeah. So they're a little smaller than the standard Muppet style puppet. And they have teeny tiny mouths sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, like anything that where your hand can't fit through and is a little smaller size. Uh, the Doozers from Fraggle Rock. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Which Fraggle Rock just came back. Um that's exciting. Yeah. So there's, there's there's so many forms of puppetry. I also was able to do one um, one spot with like uh, my just I love working with um, a- Andy, um, Andrew Thomas Wong. Um, he came to me once and was like, hey, um, I have this project and I want to do some underwater puppetry. And that was the first time I ever thought about it. And so at the time, it was so exciting to me. And one of my most cherished collaborations because he just really allowed me to express myself creatively and and uh have the f- the space and the freedom to create which is beautiful yeah. and and also the idea of like now creating a puppet that moves in water which is very different than just a puppet that moves in our our space so yeah. i had a little fishbowl next to me and every material i was like testing it in the water right before i put it in the puppet and then Puppeteering in water is so fun. I loved it. Man, 
that i i, I def i'm definitely gonna look into that <laughs> is there a scene is there something that, that you've done uh that i can with i don't know find on, on oh online? yeah yeah i'll repost it on on the gram at, at viva la puppet and also it's i think it's on our website viva la puppet.com awesome did you know that when you get a trademark of like <laughs> viva la puppet you also own like the translation so we also own like long live the puppet wow so <laughs> That's awesome. You can say long, long live the puppet, put it on a shirt, and I'd be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> no, no to self. Not, <laughs> I'm not making a long live the puppet tease anytime yeah. soon and yeah. selling them on hubwave.com. We're not <laughs> cut cut that idea, uh, friend. We're not we're not doing it after all, man. <laughs> I I admire how much you've taken something that you're passionate for and is not a traditional career yeah. and you didn't know anyone that was in it and you made it your own and you've been you know successful uh doing it because you followed your dream literally yeah. followed dream. a dream yeah that's that's such a beautiful thing um i i love music mm -hmm. and you know for, for me all of this that's happened throughout my career started with the love for music mm -hmm. um whether i'm in, doing something in sports or yeah. um doing an interview mm -hmm. but like it initially started with with music it started with like djing yeah um which i think that's how we yeah met um years uh, and years and years how like a decade ago more wow. more than more than yeah more than 10 yeah. years ago for sure wow. we're when we initially met um with alexis i have to shout out alexis by way of alexis de la rocha my star sister my supporter and best cheerleader i cheerlead i'm, not, I'm her cheerleader in life i love her so much yeah yeah we have a mutual friend alexis <laughs> which we we love and mm -hmm. um yeah so alexis and i mm -hmm. started working together we, we were hosting yeah. that was like my first hosting game tv um and mm -hmm. i was doing my djing yeah. thing on on the side yep. uh and then that's where i met you mm -hmm. Um, oh, no. when they were performing <laughs> with with their band, Alexis had a band. Yes, Beatmo. Beatmo. <laughs> yes, and I remember I went to a show, mm -hmm. and and then um, she's like, "Yeah, my friend Michelle, mm -hmm. uh, she's gonna do a, a thing on the side with puppets," <laughs> and I'm like, "What? <laughs> like how how is that how does how is that gonna work? Like <laughs> performance, and then there's a puppet off to the side and." Um, it was the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, what do you remember of, of I mean, talk of those about moments? a friend that like supports you no matter what. <laughs> it's like finding a way to like infuse my way into her into her CD release party. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, hey, I want to do a live puppet music video when you play this one song. Orale. And like, <laughs> you remember that? Yep. Yep. And man, the, the house was packed. And I just like created this like one take idea of making them in like cutouts so i i photographed all of them in a bunch of different ways and we made these little like puppets and it was like three tiers of a stage and i just remember going from one one place to the next and the next and the next and everything had a thing that i was making move and i think it's still on youtube i gotta find that oh i gotta <laughs> i gotta find that too um but yeah that that was that was super special and just again just having people around my life that also just got it and weren't like what what's that mean what is that that's weird no i would never really i guess i just didn't keep people in my life that would give me that you know reaction you know what michelle i think it 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 you get those okays and mm -hmm. you get those yeah you should do it because they see the passion within mm. you you know mm. like when you when you <laughs> feel like someone's passionate about something yeah. and and they're serious about something there's mm -hmm. there's nothing you can really yeah. do or say but just support them True. right and you're oh. like yeah you should totally do it yeah um the fact that you weren't you know you know half doing it mm -hmm. um or, or half as passionate you're like yeah i kind of want to do this thing or, absolutely it's like no i want to do this thing totally uh the energy behind a thing like if my friend's like i don't know i kind of feel like i should like it sounds to me like you don't want to 
<laughs> uh, exactly. And I, I, I do remember the moment that my life shift and it shifted and it was really something super simple. And it's just something I said, I went from saying like, hi, my name is Michelle and I'm an actor to one day, like thinking to myself, like, am I like, I'm, I'm not, I think I'm a puppeteer. I think I make puppets going to an event and saying like, for, for the first time to somebody saying, hi, my name is Michelle and I'm a puppeteer or hi, my name is Michelle and I make puppets. Like saying that out loud, like the guts it took for me to do that and say it proudly and, and really mean it. I think that just changed the whole trajectory of my life. Yeah. Like saying a thing that you are and owning it and owning the space of being like, yeah, I'm a puppeteer. Yeah. A puppeteer. I'm a puppeteer. Yes. Believing it. Believing it. Saying it and believing it for sure. You have to believe it yourself first. Yes. yes. And then others follow. Yes. People ask me, man, like, how do you build a team? Like, how do, like, I want to do this. I want to do that. But like, I know that I need more people, mm. you know, on my yeah. team. Like, how, how do I do that? The secret is you have to mm -hmm. believe it yourself first. Yeah. You have to own it. You have to live yeah. it. You have to mm -hmm. be it. Mm -hmm. And and that alone attracts mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. to your team, attracts that energy, attracts, you know, more gigs, jobs, opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, but that's True. that's that's key. For sure. Yeah. Just saying your name and owning owning the title of what you want for your life. Right. Just who sometimes people are like, am I a writer? I don't know. Am I a writer? Are you like, if you are a writer, yeah, say you're a writer. If that's what you want, say it, say it loud and proud and say it so loud that it, you convince yourself that you are, you know? Right. Right. If you're iffy about it, then <laughs> others are going to be iffy about oh, it. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. You enter a room with doubt. People are going to doubt. Yeah. Right. They could, they could smell that. I could smell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. If, if I was like, Hey, uh, mm -hmm. guys, kind of want to do this show with, like with like friends mondo like maybe friends, friends with mondo or i don't know mondo like mm. you guys want to help me yeah <laughs> like nah dog you're on your own right <laughs> let me know how it goes <laughs> yeah 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 okay, okay. I, 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 I'm Elisa, yeah, like, yeah. Hey. we'll see we'll see <laughs> yeah no but yeah 100 percent. you have to you have to own it you have to be yeah. it um mm. i think you've um embodied that mm from since you were uh, uh in middle school it seems yeah. like maybe even younger than yeah. that yeah yeah uh yeah i don't it's interesting because when i first came to la i just feel like i had blinders on i don't know what it was but like i didn't really s see myself and see that i couldn't do a thing in this town i just had i don't know and again I don't know how you grew up, but I'm going to assume here, and you can correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, but also maybe the way you were, you were raised, you know, mm -hmm. your parents being educators yeah. and, you know, the, the natural um, way of, of an educator, the way that they are is, is very, they're motivating, right? Mm -hmm. Like they motivate a student. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that, that oh, yeah. you were motivated, you know, early on. Mm -hmm. um which is something that built confidence oh yeah and and even though you were an introvert sure, right sure now like ambivert you know ambiverts both like yeah. i can be both but i think i vert i i veer more into the introvert you're yeah. naturally like i'm naturally introverted yeah. i'm naturally introverted i turn it on when mm -hmm. when i need to sure yeah um but the fact that you were you know you were you know, given confidence mm -hmm. and your confidence grew, you know, at an early age, I think that has a lot to do with oh, yeah. you thinking like I can walk into any room and, and own it, you know, and own, own my For craft sure. and, and own the deal that I'm presenting. For and, sure. yeah. um, it's something that I, I think is beautiful. And, and your fa parents are second generation, second generation, first generation, you know? <sighs> well, so, <laughs> so Brownsville, Texas, right? Like, you know, uh, my great 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 grandparents like lived there yeah. and it was like even before when it was mexico it, it and turned to texas like we lived in brownsville <laughs> like that's 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 where we lived you know um so i just say tejana <laughs> like, yeah 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 tejana yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah uh i 
I grew up in Brownsville. My 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 roots, my people. We are from Brownsville, South Padre Island. Woo woo. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yes. Spring Branch. <laughs> um, so so yeah. I mean, we just just always live there I mean, most of the time. You know, my family. Yeah. So the reason why I was asking, mm-hmm. you know, what what Jen, your yeah. fam you know your parents were because my my parents are i'm first generation here mm-hmm. uh in in the states uh my family's from mm-hmm. colima mexico mm-hmm. and the way that they were raised it wasn't you know a way of of feeding um confidence really or um you yeah. know um what's the word uh you know positive reinforcements mm-hmm. like none of that it mm-hmm. was yeah whatever you need to do to survive yeah for sure and you know like being creative or you know an artist or anything like that was whoa, whoa, that's yeah. beyond foreign yeah so um the fact that you you know were molded and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and given this this you know this mm-hmm. confidence and from your parents and then yeah. being educators i think that had probably mm-hmm. had a lot to to do with yeah. it yeah and also my mom like was an artist like in Uh, growing up she just loved art and um was going to school for art but became an educator you know and she taught art for a little bit i think um but having that passion for art and then seeing us and my inclination for that and just really you know supporting that and being like yes mija do it yeah for sure i think definitely um a lot of who i am is because of my parents and all the things they instilled in me and my sister yeah that's Mm -hmm. a beautiful thing i'm sure you're doing that and you're going to do that with with your oh kids. yeah oh yeah oh yeah i'm i'm not pu- pushing any puppets on them <laughs> i'm like <laughs> i'm just sitting back and like observing and i'm just seeing even like at, at an early age what little things that they gravitate to and trying to cultivate that you know not trying to force anything with anything that i see i'm, I'm just trying to like be observant because i think babies and and, and kids they they tell us early on like what they're naturally gravitated towards and uh it's kind of i feel like it's my job to like be observant and 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 see that and and listen to that and remember that yeah as they get older to remind remind them like hey like if this was my parents like hey remember that video you did and you were like a human net with your sister (laughs) maybe you should be a puppeteer (laughs) yeah was that like that ever happened yeah yeah, but the videos that i did with my sister right like my parents if if for me like if i saw my daughter later in life being like i don't know what i want to do i'd be like well when you were a baby and a kid like you really gravitated to this Wow. maybe maybe there's something there maybe there's a reason why you really love that mm-hmm. yeah you know the first time i remember uh djing mm-hmm. i was i was six years old yeah i had a cousin that was a, a dj uh, my cousin fabian mm-hmm. uh he had this whole dj set up and i always think back uh in in that moment of of if if there's a six year old now, mm-hmm. right, um, when <laughs> wanting to play with my equipment, like how open would I be to that six year old, right? Yeah. Would I be like, no, 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 yeah, <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I was like, right? But the thing is, he he mm-hmm. would he 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 would let me play with the turntables and the CD players and the mixer. Yeah. And I mean, you know, he was also love to have a good time. So if we had a fam- little family get together, mm-hmm. he would init- he would eventually like start drinking and get drunk and he'd be hanging out like with all my tios. And then who was the DJ? The yeah. seven, six, seven yes. year old kids. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, man, I'm, I'm getting like these flashbacks because uh, I'm a big uh, sports like mm-hmm. soccer and, mm-hmm. and music fan. Don't you and DJ for like for <laughs> LAFC, right? So uh, for the stadium, yeah. right? The LAFC matches. So come on, man. When I was six years old, six seven years old, um, there was a, a tournament called La Copa Oro, right? The Gold Cup, and um, Copa America too. And m- my parents, my family were big soccer fans, mm-hmm. 
and they would watch these matches and then well and, and, and party right and listen to music so i would watch soccer and play with music uh-huh. and that's what i'm doing now isn't that crazy that's six 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 years old i mean that's what i'm saying like i think yeah i think naturally the things that that we we feel in our bones from when we're born there's something there to that you know and the fact that you can come full circle as an adult and see those things click for your life too like that's amazing i mean i hope you realize like where you are and what you've accomplished and the fact that you're probably making your you're absolutely making your younger self super proud yeah i i think about if you were to tell me mm-hmm. back then oh, what yeah. is of my life today I, yes, yes, like are you kidding yes, me yes, <laughs> yes it's it's such a it's yeah. such an amazing beautiful thing but mm-hmm. i I'll, I'll say it again you know for for everyone listening and watching you know because I'm, I'm so inspired by your story uh the key is definitely going back to what we're talking about is is taking initiative and executing mm-hmm. you know no matter what people say or if they mm-hmm. if if they doubt you mm-hmm. or um you know if, uh, you don't have the support like you just mm-hmm. go you know full on yeah. i know you had a lot of support yeah um, which I think is is mm-hmm. is such a such a blessing, mm-hmm. you know. Others may not, yeah. and oh, absolutely. And, and if yeah. that's and if that is the case that where mm-hmm. you don't have the support, mm-hmm. like, hey, like as long as you yeah. believe in yourself, like For others sure. will start. Oh my gosh! And like the whole trajectory of a of a career and a life, it, it it has its ups and downs all across the way, you know. Like just like life, you, it's it's all ebbs and flows and ups and downs. And there's definitely times where people probably doubted me or doubted us or like you know um said you couldn't do a thing or or you know or that's not a career we're that noise for sure yeah um but i just i just feel like if if i ever heard that it became fuel for the fire and it just like it just made me want to push even harder and like really just do do what i love and do it proudly and um like i say sometimes now i take so much pride in being a a latinx uh latina puppeteer that i can be all over the world i can be puppeteering anywhere and i have my arm up proudly um and you know uh just to be able to be that image for a younger person like me growing up if i were to see that i'd be like what i'd probably yeah i'm I'm proud of myself yeah and i I think i'm making myself proud as a kid yeah, no, that's beautiful. You should be very proud of yeah. yourself. And and it's interesting because growing up, it's like, I don't, I, I would never say that, right? I would never say I'm proud of myself. That's being too boastful, boastful, right? Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> but later in life, I'm, I, there's no time for that, you know. Like, you know the work you put into Mando and friends. You know, you know the work that you put into who you are and what you do, and to honor that and and pat yourself on the back and say thank you. like good job yeah. man like yeah to be pr- how be, have pride in what you do and 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 be proud of yourself that's that's it's okay it's okay yeah yeah often and, and thank you thank you for that yeah. um i like how we're giving each other right we're just like <laughs> flowers you know <laughs> um yeah I, I i yeah i thank you for that and um you know, I just think it's 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 such a beautiful thing when, um, you know, we get to mm-hmm. to to live our dream. Um, but it it it's it's not that we're 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 lucky. It's it's that we've worked, you know, towards towards those uh, those goals and those yeah. dreams. Yeah, it's gosh, I get <laughs> it's not a glamorous life sometimes. Like it, the yeah. hustle. It's like. Sometimes there's just like fur and feathers everywhere. I'm like bags under my eyes, wearing like whatever shop attire, you know, <laughs> not fashionable at all. You know, like I did my makeup for you, Mondo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I yes. appreciate that. I, um, I went from like puppet shop, shit, like just schlub to, you know, glam for you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, the actual life. <laughs> of 
of doing what we do or doing what I do, especially because there's so many materials and things everywhere. And it's just like, sometimes it's, it's, it's a mess, but it's a beautiful mess. It's, yeah. it's, it's staying up sometimes as long as it takes to get it done. Uh, and sometimes for me, um, kind of leaning into the idea that this is a part of my process, you know, like yeah. sometimes I, like pushing against a thing and being like, you know what? You should not do any more all nighters ever. Like don't do an all nighter. Why do you do that to yourself? But then realizing that, gosh, that's kind of when I do my best work. Like for me, when the puppet really clicks and the eyes just come right there and the eyebrows just are set perfectly. And then when, when a puppet clicks and the, in the character, like, comes to life I, and and that moment when i see that when i'm like messing with it so much and futzing with it when that happens it's just like i squeal i always like like audibly squeal <laughs> like, and so i call that my squeal of approval <laughs> like nice. whenever that happens that's when i know that's it that's a viva la puppet puppet <laughs> i love it yeah i love it yeah it's it must be a crazy process very time consuming i'm sure yeah uh yeah yes. yes puppets are handmade so every part of what you see somebody has had a hand in cutting it patterning it stitching it together um altering it uh dyeing it dyeing the fleece pan dyeing the fleece you know creating painting the eyeballs like every single element of our puppets are handmade so tattoos right <laughs> yeah yeah puppet tattoos yeah alexis, <laughs> alexis was telling me that yeah. she's that she's done some mm -hmm. puppet tattoos oh with yeah you. i just throw her some arms and she makes some tattoos on <laughs> tats it up with a sharpie um, does, she, does she do real tattoos too alexis no just puppet tattoos. because because fred i think <laughs> wants to do the other leg i mean she could probably get down with a sharpie <laughs> it won't last long though fred has te <laughs> texas on his right leg calf <laughs> yes yeah oh so, so she doesn't all right well no. we'll find somebody for the other yeah, leg Fred. Yeah, 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 yeah. i got you man <laughs> no brownsville on the other, brownsville <laughs> on the Be other leg Be on Be the Bill, left texas yeah. yes yeah and texas on the right yes <laughs> What would you say is is what you felt when you heard about Waffles and Mochi, mm -hmm. I don't, like getting green lit and you being a part of it yeah. and Michelle Obama yeah. being a part of it? Like, how did that come about, too? Uh, I mean, that was such an exciting part of my life. Um, getting the call that, you know, uh, that they wanted me to be Waffles. I was like, I I, I was kind of like oh my gosh this is this is the call this is amazing this is the call that you 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 hear people talk about that that call and and it was happening and it's like oh my gosh it was just such an exciting time and a moment that was so validating and 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 i was just kind of overwhelmed with emotion in that moment i remember it was in my backyard and i just went to my knees and i i came inside and i saw my husband holding my daughter and i just went to my knees and i i just felt like it was such a such an exciting show i mean to to be able to you know travel the world eat amazing food from world renowned chefs um you know a puppeteer <laughs> a a character that i love um it it was just such a magical time in my life and i feel like uh that that moment realizing that i get to be a part of this really wonderful show it was just so huge yeah and what is what is Michelle Obama's mm -hmm. uh, involvement in in the show? I mean, it's her production company that wow. that um, is a part of the show, uh, Higher Ground Production Company, um, and she is actually in uh, season one of Waffles and Mochi. So I, I shared a lot of scenes with her. Uh, I was basically I say like I was just like knee to knee with her um, on set a bunch. Um, so we shared a lot of space, and being able to share space with a uh, a, a woman as wonderful and lovely and magnanimous as her you know it, it it's just a moment that i didn't i i don't take lightly like i just it was just a it's just such a beautiful moment in time to share space with someone like that that i'm just hoping like some of her sparkle just like fluttered by on top of me and like uh um yeah it, it, it's it's it was a trip and it was so beautiful and wonderful to be a part of that's amazing. Yeah. That's that's wow. Like that. That is is so cool. Have mm -hmm. you met the family too? 
no, no, just just Michelle Obama, Mrs. O. Mm -hmm. Man, it, now what? <laughs> what, what 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 is that like? I know, right? I know. Well, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she's just so uh, um, everything you you dream she is. That's who she is. She's just such a wonderful, um, beautiful light. And right when she walked walked on the set, it was just just magnetic. Her 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 power, her beauty, um, her just the magic that she 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 has, you know, when she walks into a room, it's super special. And just to be knee to knee with that, I was like, it's very palpable. I feel your 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 um, wonderfulness and majesty. <laughs> um, but she also has the amazing ability to, you know, make you feel at ease and and comfortable. And um, it's just so wonderful to share scenes with her and and kind of be her acting partners. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's what's the feeling like for you? Are you are you I mean, are you are you excited? Are you nervous? Um I know that, you know, acting actually I don't know. Like acting as a mm -hmm. as a person, mm -hmm. you know, your face being on camera, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, you know, Puppet. your entire body, yeah. you know, being mm -hmm. uh playing a part of, of of a puppet. Yeah. Um is that a little, does that give you more of, um, of, a, of, a, of, of protection or a wall where you're like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm not as nervous. Oh yeah. Like the pup, they, in the puppet world, we say the puppet made me do it. So it's kind of like when you put a puppet on, it just happens. Like you don't know sometimes the things that the puppet's going to say and what it's going to do. It's just doing its thing. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely an element of, of, um, literally like standing behind a puppet and and um and that liquid courage of like putting a puppet on it's like it's not me it's puppet <laughs> yeah it's its own personality yeah yeah um i saw that uh mochi uh, there's a scene where mochi is is mm -hmm. is cutting oh yeah uh she has like a, a, a mochi has a a, a, a yeah, knife has a knife yeah and cutting vegetables uh -huh. and how oh, yeah now, how but, is that how is yeah. those scenes made well with waffles like um a puppet like that being able with waffles, to sorry, yeah, yeah yeah a puppet like that being able to um rig a, um uh utensils and things in her hand to be able to eat food and 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 interact with food it was a delicate balance for sure like to make it look um appetizing and 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 fun and and also just really be something that was innovative and new and revolutionary uh, for its time you know being able to have a puppet eat and experience foods and really like put a spoonful of something in its mouth and eat it. Like that was really exciting to, to figure out with the team. Now this next section of the program is sponsored by Verizon 5G. It's 5G built right from the network more people rely on. 5G ultra wideband is available in parts of select cities and 5G nationwide is available in 2700 plus city speaking of 5g i want to talk a little bit about tech what piece of tech what do you say you use the most today hmm? oh yeah yeah there's so many so many new advancements with puppeteering um there's i mean animatronics are always amazing um but there's definitely there's these digital puppets where you can put your hand in them and like and it's like a glove that has sensors that can go to uh go to the computer and then they can create these characters based on what you do with your hand. Um, there's also, I feel like we're going to be putting on Oculus soon and just everybody's going to be puppeteering yeah, yeah, <laughs> in their yeah, own yeah. worlds. But um, there's probably an element of, of, of a virtual, some sort of puppeteering that is going to happen, I'm sure. What piece of tech would you say that, that, you, use, that you use the most today? Tech? Oh, hmm my iPad. Yeah. <laughs> I design on my iPad. I use my iPad sometimes as a monitor. So puppeteers need monitors. Monitors are basically like, you know, a, a screen that we can see what the camera sees because sometimes we're underneath or we're in a box um, uh, and we don't see anything, but we need that screen to see what our puppet's doing. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty lo-fi in, in terms of like the, the stuff that I do, but um 
I, I love simple mechanisms and creating a puppet um, very simply to do a thing. Usually my mechanisms are just like elastic and string. So I'm pretty simplistic in certain ways. So the iPad, how do you use it? Do you connect it via like Wi-Fi to a camera or something? Yeah, sometimes yeah. I do that. But I mean, hardwired monitors are always the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I design everything on my iPad. I just love oh, like sketching it and yeah, all the puppets and, um, I love to, okay. So character designing is so fun. And especially with now over the years, I've cre created like the sensibilities of designing a puppet. And there's always like, I always say there's always a scale of like creepy and charming and like that scale, you're always riding the line of like, eh, it's going to be too creepy. Oh, ugh, that puppet looks like Uncanny Valley. Oh, it's, it's so <laughs> repulsing. It looks like me um, <laughs> to, to super duper charming. And like, there's something to um, paring down a design so simply that even just like little beady eyes can really be so magical and wonderful. Wow. So... I love designing puppets. Do you look at people's faces like a different way? Like a puppet? Think? Yeah, all y'all are like, puppets in here to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> are you like, he, he has an angry puppet face. <laughs> no, like I see you and I'm just like, oh, well, your puppet clearly just has like all the curly hair on top. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But a but nice you, puppet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you make likeness puppets, puppets that look like a person, it's interesting because... Um, the way you see yourself, like if you're my client and you're coming to me like, hey, I want a puppet of myself. I'd be like, OK, but what do you really want it to look like? Because the way we see ourselves, you know, like it is seeing yourself in a in a puppet version. It's like seeing an amplified caricature of yourself and being able to be respectful of you as a friend and be like, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I know, like you. This is what you you think you look like, but I'm gonna. Yes, I'm gonna honor that. You know what I'm saying? Like where you get go to Disneyland and they do the characters and like my jaw's not that big. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so there's a sensibility to to being able to see a person and be like, oh, how, but how do they see themselves and how do they want themselves to come through in a puppet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I realized I was a, a chubby little kid. Yeah, when I went to Knott's Berry Farm and a guy sketched me <laughs> and uh F you dude, F you <laughs> and, and I don't know why I don't know if he asked me if I, I don't know why he drew me as a hockey player. <gasps> okay. Um, what? And then he he drew is also the, the same uh uh -huh. moment that I realized I had a big nose uh, uh from from my face back then. Thanks. I grew into sir. it kind of. <laughs> Um, but he drew this big nose and then he, he, drew, he drew a sign that said like the goal this way. And then it had, and it said, uh, uh, a hamburger that way. And tell me why my caricature was going <laughs> to the hamburger. You made me smart. And I was like, wait, and you know, I was like eight years old oh, and I'm geez. like, <laughs> What are you trying to say here? <laughs> that's when I realized. Dude, that's super. I need to cut down on the rude. No, that's that's messed up. He was up. just having a bad day that just completely, <laughs> <laughs> it completely like informed how you felt about yourself moving through life. <laughs> yeah, so I, I hope you're not doing that with puppets. No way, dude. No, no way. Oh man, that's that's brutal. <laughs> Isn't it, man? That's, that's cold blooded for him. Oh. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I paid for it. <laughs> that is the rub. And I paid for it. <laughs> Hilarious. So I think good. I have it somewhere. That's so good. Yeah, you you gotta post that. <laughs> I, I have it somewhere. I have paid for it. I kept it. Um <laughs> what would you say um is is that next thing for you? Wow. Good question. The next thing for me, I feel like uh, I've always said this, but like just the natural progression of what we're doing, but like elevated and, 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 and bigger, bigger budgets, bigger teams, bigger projects. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always, it's always the thing that we go back and forth with is growing, but not growing too fast or too, you know, just honoring the process yeah. of growth and, and not trying to speed it along, um, allowing it to happen. 
And so I feel like the projects, it's just a natural progression. Like our projects have become more and more major and like um, bigger budgets, more team members, um, just a larger scale uh, quantities. Like it's just all naturally progressing and happening. So um, ultimately, yeah, I'd love to like just have the Willy Wonka <laughs> factory. Um, because I mean, when you hear puppet shop, you think, um, uh, one day I'm gonna be able to get that golden ticket to go into the Viva La Puppet puppet shop, and yeah. and uh, that's the dream is to be able to say, Mondo, come over, and then you you walk inside and it's like the music starts yeah. <laughs> from Willy Wonka, and it you know fulfills all your puppet fantasies. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 excited for that moment. Right? Yeah, like I'm this, excited for you. This for that is moment. this this space like for you. This is this is that man. This is so cool. Thank you. This thank you. So thank awesome. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a one-stop shop for, mm -hmm. for everything that, that we do. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, I, I do it with, with the, the, the love and the hard work of, of my team. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm nothing without these guys, and, and, and they know that. Um, at least I hope so. Right, right guys? Is he just having a confessional right here? <laughs> this is the first time you're hearing this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I've never heard this before. <laughs> they're tearing up just one tear. yeah i know it uh, they, uh, they're hiding under their mask yeah right yeah, yeah. Now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they uh no you know it's 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 a team it's a team mm -hmm. effort and yeah. i'm sure you know yes. that yeah um, it takes a team and i'm so grateful and thankful and impressed every day with my team uh and and the, the team it constantly changes and evolves and depending on the project so we're able to employ so many different amazing artists to come together to bring a thing to life that wasn't here before and yeah. that's a super exciting thing it's like one day someone will unearth our puppet and it, it will have a little label that says viva la puppet <laughs> and it existed in our lifetime you know it it's a thing that was not here and now it is and that's that makes me super proud yeah what i love about what, what well what i love about why you're here today is that you know yes you deserve your your, your flowers and you know as a as a latina in entertainment in in a in a very you know challenging um competitive uh field in and that is entertainment and then puppetry on top of that yeah. um you know you're shining and you're doing such a great job and you know, a lot of times you, people may not see your face. They see the face, faces of, of no, your puppets. No, they just see this. And sometimes they'll see my bun and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God, what do I do? But I wanted people to to see your face and your lovely face Thanks. and and get to know you because I know you're, you know, you're kicking butt and you're just getting started. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for, for those that... Uh, may not have watched um, Waffles and Mochi. Can you just briefly describe what, what the show is about? And it's available on Netflix. Yeah, now. it's available on Netflix. Season one, um, it's just an amazing food adventure show that helps take kids and their families on a journey throughout the world to learn about the joy of food and reconnect with food in a in a beautiful way and reconnect with different ingredients and all different ways to prepare ingredients and just really just getting getting people excited about food. I mean, I got excited just doing it. I was like, wow, I learned so much. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's available on Netflix. Um, our, we have a holiday special. It's called Waffles and Mochi um, Holiday Feast, and that's coming out on the 23rd next week. Awesome. Yeah, November 23rd. Mm -hmm. So check it out. It's going to be fun. It's a, it's, it's a holiday feast, and it's wonderful and fun and lots of food, it's really special guests. Tracy Ellis Ross. I love it. Samin Nasrat. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing people, yeah, are, are in it. So please watch. It's so much fun, and I had so much fun doing it. And every now and then, if you if you see my bun, which you won't, <laughs> <laughs> then just uh, think of me down below, just like trying not to have a neck. And it's you. It's so it's like also you voicing it. And yes. In yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Voicing and puppeteering uh, and being in super uncomfortable places. But that's the <laughs> job of a puppeteer, you know? You put your body second sometimes to, like, the puppet and what it needs to, to do. And then and then you cry later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then kids are obviously, and fa like, families, like, parents, like, 
they're loving your show. Yeah. It's it's been become such a big hit. Obviously, mm-hmm. Michelle Obama's a big part of it yeah. too. Yeah, for um, sure. And like I, I've seen photos, you know, online of of kids like dressing up as as waffles and mochi. How does that feel for you? Yeah. To be a part of a a, a franchise really uh, like like this, it's such a special show. It's so wonderful and amazing, and I love my daughter loves watching it. My son loves watching it too, and probably because they can hear my voice a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the character, yeah. but um, yeah, it's just a, a, the time of my life. It's so wonderful. Have you been asked to to call someone or, or record oh. your voice as mochi, <laughs> as as waffles as waffles? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Can I? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you uh, do a quick uh, voicemail recording yeah, yeah, so yeah. people call me? <laughs> yeah, oh, totally, totally, yeah. Hey, this uh, is Waffles. <laughs> you reach Mondo's cell phone. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm sure you, like, kids love that. So, uh, yeah, it's it's so cool. I think I just came back from visiting home um, in Brownsville, and a friend of mine, uh, her kids came over, and they were they were, like, just looking at me like this, like, and I said, hi, and I was talking and they, and then her, her, the, my friend, she said, she does waffles. That's her. And they're like, how do you do the voice? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do the voice, do the voice. And, uh, and I was like, ah, oh. so I just, I just did the three, two yum blast off. And, and they were like, oh. and they didn't really respond. And I said, does it sound like her? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Kind of just, I mean, it sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, it was it was so, so special, and that, yeah, that's the thing. Um, a lot of the time, puppeteers they're walking through life and they're passing by, you know, you on the street. You don't know who they are, which is pretty great. Like, there's something wonderful about that too. It's like Daft Punk, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I walk around with a, a cool, cool mask on. <laughs> yeah, nobody had, had, would had n- no idea that that was Daft Punk. No, nope, no, nope. or Waffles, or Elmo. Or, you know, any of the puppets, Kermit, like you, unless you really dug and looked for them on, uh, you know, Daft Punk, what do they look yeah, like? Yeah, what do they look like? Sia, <laughs> what does she really look like? You know, like, you wouldn't know. Yeah. So, um, there's Sia. some, <laughs> I mean, I knew Sia before bangs, Sia, <laughs> weird yeah. Sia, so I kind of knew what she looked like, but yeah, kids are like, who, she's a, she's hair. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, marshmallow so, too, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. There's something really, really cool about you know, being being a part of something that's so huge, but also having the privacy and walking around. It's yeah, like nobody knows who I am. This is great. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. man, I'm I'm so so happy that that you, uh, you came by, and stopped by Mondo and friends. Before I let you go, though, yeah. I have uh, these rapid fire questions. Oh, uh, for you. <gasps> Rapid fire <laughs> with Michelle Samora. Ready? Let's do it. Favorite Spanish word. Ooh. Uh, that's a good one. Híjole. I don't know. <laughs> híjole. I'll take híjole. <laughs> híjole. Eh. Texas or California? <sighs> uh, can I just say I'm a Tejangelino? I'm a Tejangelino. I'm both. I love both. I love both. Is that, is that what you uh, refer to yourself as now? I'm now he will. I got it on my leg. I got it on my leg. Uh, he, yeah, he, he does have it on his leg. Right? You do. Uh, you can't take that Texas <laughs> tattoo off. Even though yeah. Fred has, uh, he, he's kind of, he's becoming an LA guy. He mm-hmm. just doesn't want to admit it. Right. He's going to like coffee shops and 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 sushi restaurants. This is, this is how you know the stars at night are big and bright. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's he's definitely still Texan. Uh, favorite piece of tech that you use? You said your iPad. Yeah. Uh, is there is there another one? Oh. Hmm. I mean, now Air, the AirPods. Like, AirPods. Oh, I love AirPods. Yeah. I, it's so funny. Most of the time, I'm just like, I, are these things on? Like, <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, those are great. I love those. If I leave home without my AirPods, I feel like yep. something's missing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Best song to play at a party? Ooh. Uh, well, recently, I mean, I, 
Sheesh. Anything what right now what you have, like TLC, anything TLC, Mary J. Blad. Yeah. <laughs> Old school, throwing it back. I had um Family Affair earlier. Uh-huh. By Mary J. Blige. Yeah, you did. That got me going. But really, I, I love the strokes. The strokes. I love the strokes. I love the strokes. Julian Casablanca's dude, I got to like, okay, I'll tell you later, but like I got to do a, mu- a music video for his company, Colt Records in New York. And I, I was like, <gasps> it's Julian Casablanca's. What? Anyways. That's super cool. Yeah. I love the strokes too, mm-hmm. by the way. Um, I love the killers too. Oh, the killers. And I love a lot of the artists that you've done puppeteering for too yeah. that we didn't mention. Uh, what's your favorite like artist collab? Ooh. Uh, I love working. Uh, I, I really like enjoyed working with, I mean, I worked a lot with Katy Perry back in the day. Like, I puppeteered, oh my gosh, the first time I puppeteered uh, something with Katy Perry, it was like a cat paw, and I, the first scene that I had, they were like, okay, now slap her across the face. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to slap Katy Perry across the face with a little cat paw, and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, yeah, um, done a couple of, of puppet stuff uh, with Katy Perry. Who can say that? Right? I slapped Katy Perry in the face with a cat paw. With a cat paw. Kitty cat. Katy cat. That's pretty legendary right there. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Latino food dish? Ooh, I mean, my, my family's tamales during Christmas. I love the tamalada. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wait, and, and oh, a tamalada. Mm hmm. What do you have a favorite tamal? Tamal? Oh yeah. Um it would be my grandma, she used to make pork and raisin. Pork and do you raisin? That? No, do you do that in Brownsville? You... Were you from Brownsville? <laughs> <laughs> Must be like a sweet tamal. Yeah, slightly sweet and just like the flavors of it are so good. Um but yeah, tamales are just like ugh. They're just kind of like home. When I when I eat them, it's just reminds me of like the holidays and all my family coming together when all my grandmas and grandpas were alive and like the whole family would get together and make the malice and i have a big family back home so you know being out here making our way you know navigating through los angeles but going back home and just all my aunts and uncles are there and you know seeing my family it's just so special oh that's beautiful yeah yeah something about tamales that that say family Right, that and feel family. It's specific. Like everybody makes tamales a little different, but like back home, they're a little, little skinnier, and like you, you add flavor to the to the masa. So you add like chili powder, and 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 so it looks like almost orange. It's so good. So I have this thing yeah. with the, a tamal that mm-hmm. I want to do for the you holiday. A tamal. The holiday puppet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a tamal puppet. Hear me out. A whole, a film. This baby tamal makes it out of the pot, right? He has big dreams to be a big movie yes. star. Yes. It's gonna happen. You're saying it into existence right now. It's called Leonardo de Tamal. <laughs> Are you in? I'm in. <laughs> you, you had me at tamale, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have this, this idea for tamal this holiday season mm-hmm. uh, to do a pizza tamal. <gasps> so, yes. So, I've never seen it anywhere. Uh, yes. I want to make, like, I want to do a, a tamal. Yeah. It's kind of like a Hot Pocket, uh, but instead of, like, the bread, it's going to be a, a, a tamal, like a masa, yeah. right? But the inside is going to be marinara, pepperoni. Yes. And, and cheese. Yes. So whenever I've talked about uh, it, yeah. people are like, "Oh, I'm all about that." Because with the exception what, of you, you're you oh, seem excited. Which yes, is- I'm excited because like that's what I do as an adult. Like me, and my husband, we, we elevated the tamal like uh, recently a couple years back. We're like, what if we like put different toppings inside? Is that like, <gasps> you know, don't mess with the tradition? But then we we made like a cheeseburger tamale. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was like grass-fed beef and <laughs> and um and cheese gluten-free masa no actually this is our secret oh i don't know if i should tell you because it's so good tell us tell us so you don't use lard you put like coconut oil instead you know when coconut oil gets cold it's kind of like the consistency of lard yep 
It's so good. It doesn't taste like coconut. It doesn't taste like coconut. I swear. It's so good. Anyways, um, we put like the, the grass fed beef and, we, you know, flavor it real good. Cheese, uh, you can put onion, whatever, but jalapeno in the, and it's so good. Jalapeño as a stuffing or jalapeño in, in inside, the masa? Inside, inside, inside. So it's like a che- you're eating a cheeseburger with a little jalapeño. Mm. Right back home, in, in when you go to Whataburger, like they offer jalapeños on the side oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. You got to have a jalapeño with your cheeseburger. <laughs> Whataburger or In-N-Out? In-N-Out. Oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there's the> <laughs> uh, Fred, Fred is leaving us. Fred is leaving us. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's giving me the wrap up signal now. Okay, okay, I'll 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 um I'll I'll say something better. Rutledge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what oh, what is back home in Texas downtown? It's you. It's the span of your arms like this. It's yeah. a little like alleyway that they turned into a restaurant back in like nine, early 1900s or something. It's called Rutledge, and it they just make the smallest wimpy burgers. <laughs> just like so yeah, good with little. Classic little slice of ham and they're just like and it's so good oh man yeah we're doing that is that in brownsville yeah it's from brownsville oh yeah you know what else is in brownsville now spacex yep. spacex the landscape of our hometown has changed huh brownsville? yeah brownsville? there's a whole revitalization that's happening but that's really exciting like people are getting you know eventually gonna go probably to brownsville to go into outer space one day right yeah Elon Brownsville to the moon. Yeah, Brownsville to the moon Boca for sure. To Boca Chica to Mars. <laughs> it's exciting. That's yeah, awesome. it's a lot going on right now. Lastly, what's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? Oh, no one really knows about. E. I have no idea. Jenny? I don't think I have one. What? You put me on the spot. Michelle, Shelly, Shell. I think I'm creating it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, a nickname. Alexis told me. Oh shoot! It's because you know something. <gasps> What'd she say? She calls you. Is it like Michelle or Michelle or, or, or something along those lines? That's cute. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I is is your Michelle? is that the one? Michelle? Mishi? Oh, Mishi. 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 M-I-C-H-I. Or my friend calls me Moch, which is funny because I, in Waffles of Mochi, I would say Moch a lot. So Mishi, Moch, M- Moch. What else? Should we walk, workshop this? What, what's another name I can have? So all of a sudden, <laughs> now you have like t- 10 yeah, million have 10 nicknames. nicknames and no one really Samora. knows about. People sometimes <laughs> will just call me by my last name, which I'm down for. I like it. We're going to go with which one do you think people know the least? The least? Moch? Moch? Moch. 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 My friend Joanna calls me Moch. 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 Hey, Moch. Like, that sounds like a mouthful, but I love it. Moch. Well, Moch, I want to thank you <laughs> for coming to Mondo and Friends. I yes. really, really appreciate it. And, you know, we all love you here. You're, you're welcome here anytime. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, continue killing it and, and waving that you know that that latinx latina uh brownsville flag yeah, wherever yeah. you go um because you know you're making you again you should be very proud of yourself and you're making us very proud too thank you so much yeah, thank thanks you. for having me thanks for bringing me here and then we got to talk about the tamale baby soon yes because inspired no yes <laughs> <laughs> michelle samora thank you so much and thank you very much for watching and listening to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon.